suffer present death. <laughs> well, apparently the pirates were a chivalrous lot. So if you go over to this table, there are two copper coin stacks and one pair of coins, which collectively bring our total to 806. I'm going to tackle the subaquatic outpost next. It's actually not a bad idea just to sneak in there on ground level, but we just have to time our surfacing so that we don't run into any problems. We need to be rather quick getting through the door as well. Into the water. Let's swim around. That way I can watch the patrollers before I try to do anything. Now note something amiss. Okay, well that's a bad idea. It's a terrible angle of approach. And we'll go with my original plan. Who's there? Who goes there? Okay, that's the problem. That guy. Thought I heard a first alert just then, so let's dive a little deeper. Get all the way over to the other side. <sighs> From here, we can wait at the end point of one of the patrols. Well, maybe we can get in before that. And if we shoot over under these stairs... We're now pretty well set. When you hear that the coast is clear, you want to come down here. I misheard, because he'll bump into Hold. me here. What dragonfly? Yeah, we don't have time. We're going to have to wait for that patrol to cycle all the way up and out. So we'll just drop in behind him as soon as he shows up. Now we should be able to time... I was going to say, we should be able to time the Watcher and just squeak out into that room. Drop left. Now we need to start creeping because no one is down here but everyone above us can hear us if we make noise. in this first bilge water room. Look carefully around and you'll find a purse. Brings our total to 906. Then we just need to carefully creep all the way down this tunnel. So on the floor of this room is something we'll need. The key to cargo locker 5. 
Just take it with us. <gasps> now we can mantle up out of the water. Continue being very careful to make no noise. In this locker we find another purse, brings our total to 1,006. And in this locker, there are three silver coin stacks, which bring our total up to 1,042. Now, oh yeah, let's read that little scroll before we leave. Wow, Rick. Indeed, Father Karras's plan proves yet more brilliant than I hath imagined. The Father doth call it the Cetus Project, after the Cetus Amicus. The project itself, however, is in truth the grand meshing of several operations, like two gears joining their cogs. At the KD site, Cavador hath uncovered the ancient power used by our order to benefit all of humankind. Our vessel must needs transport those discoveries back here to Markham's Isle. Even the restoration of the lighthouse was to direct it by Karras himself. When the Cetus Amicus returns from a journey to the KD site, the lighthouse beacon is used to signal Karis and Angel Watch. Everything doth prove so machine-like, so perfect, friend Loris. Let's put that back where it was, and then we gotta get back into the water, creep all the way back out the way we came. By the way, we are now in Subaquatic Post 1. Another little marking on our map, and I have no idea why this has appeared on our map, but there's an old pirate shanty over in the west side, which we actually won't mess around with because there's nothing in there that we need. So, emerging from the water, we have to time the Watcher and the Patroller. Let's just be wary of that. If you can get back here, this is a safe spot. Which you can use to figure out where the Patroller is. That was just about perfect timing, and that's worth a real save. We got some hard stuff coming up. The only real problem spot in this mission, I'd say. We need to get over into that tunnel. As you can see, it's very well guarded. Two stationaries. A ground level patroller, a top level patroller, plus the guy we just got around comes up here sometimes. And those guys are both pivoters. There's a lot to worry about and a lot that can go wrong, but I find good use of rope arrows is the best way to handle it. So let's cross the water. <sighs> it's not a perfect shadow, but no one can see us here. So we have two exercises in good timing to accomplish here. First, there's a silver nugget. It's pretty hard to find up on top of that beam. I find the best way to get to it is with a well-placed rope chain. I think one of those three can surely is surely up to the task. The advantage of being up high, of course, is that we can generally avoid detection. But 
We do need our boy to willingly jump from rope to rope. Devastating. So you can see how tough this becomes. Because we don't have enough space to actually get on top of the rope, the beam. That would make things easy. But it's not an option. So there we got the nugget at least. It's only worth 20, it brings our total to 1,062. I'm gonna have to do a rope chain to retrieve my arrow. Because I forgot I can't drop down onto this padding, the drop is too big. I need to be able to drop into the water, so. I need to land another shot that'll allow me to retrieve the first arrow. Hopefully that's good enough. Nope, too far away. Let's try again. A little closer, maybe. That was still too far. That one ought to do the trick. I can nab my original arrow. Just keep gradually working my way over until I have all three. And now I should be able to organize my water drop. Assuming that I can reach the second arrow with this one. I think I can just position myself correctly and... I get a steep. Then it's just a matter of timing the drop so the guy in the subaquatic outpost doesn't hear me. So let's, let's give him a little bit to get elsewhere. The guy who heard us was underneath us. In case you were wondering, it was none of these four. Now, I'm convinced that this is possible without a first alert. I haven't actually pulled it off yet. That doesn't mean it can't be done. Of course, none of those will work. I need one that's actually over the balcony. Although that might be too far. want to land these exactly right. Well, that might actually work. Let me just see. What noise there? That's softly. So you see the problem. We have to time everyone exactly right. Let me do a real save now that I've got all my arrows back, but I remain convinced that this is possible. Just gonna need good timing.
If I can get to the top of the first one without comments, that'll be good. It's that shadow move. Try being at the very top because that was a little darker. If he can turn around without a first alert, then I'm gonna quick save here because that's good news. What dragonfly? And he can't. I think I'm instead gonna have to wait for him to complete his cycle from down here, then try it. Okay, let's try it. Oh heck. Why am I doing a chain? If I can just mount up from the water, that's loads easier. I thought it was well lit all the way over there, but it's not. need to make it here without any comments. Alright. Oh, but I can't shoot from here. That's the problem. Alright. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so. Let's fire a rope. We can reach from there, then sneak over. Let's try it. What dragonfly flits about? Okay, I'm gonna have to wait for his patrol to cycle, which is fine. Got impatient. Always, always the bane of a would-be ghoster. Wait, what? Who hurt? Okay, well I didn't hear it that time, so... Somebody didn't like my splashing over to the rope. It's that patroller. We'll wait for him to turn, too. Okay. Okay, that's a little too far back from the railing. Let's try and land a better shot. Hopefully that's better. We'll find out. I think it is. It certainly appears to be closer. Ready for the He's on his way the right now. I welcome the fight. But I've verified what's important, which is that I can now silently make the jump over the railing. Just need to wait until both patrollers are clear. Then I'll abuse quick save and quick load to get the pivoters where I need them. And everything should work out. Now I just need the 
pivoter there to turn around. Who goes there? Okay. Well, if they alert no matter what, appears to be the case. I think I'm probably stuck what taking a first there? alert here. Calls. Oh, the ground level guy went full on alert, hunt mode alert. So I need to, I need to move pretty quickly with him. I'll take a first alert here. It may be possible not to. What noise that? Ooh, but cannot have that. Absolutely cannot have that. Over the railing. Whee! Now I want to try and get my vine back. Well, I've got a window in which to do it. Maybe I can get it from the railing. Oh, goodness. I... I confess, I hadn't thought about the retrieval problem until just now. But up. Over. Down. Let's try and... Who's there? Who goes there? Rats would be wise to scurry elsewhere. Tis a coward's game you play. Okay, he's he's seeing me, which is my problem. All's quiet now. <laughs> okay, I think I've got a good window here. Okay. Well, I think you'll have to take first alerts getting in there, but still eminently ghostable. So we've arrived in the flooded old living quarters. Only one thing to do in here, but it's an important thing. So swim to the end as fast as you can. And give this a read. The New Scripture of the Master Builder, Draft, page 16. Kara saw that a person, an animal, a plant, anything ill-born of nature, when consumed by the gaseous necrotic mutox, would dissolve into rust. Karis had observed this many times, over and over again, for in it he felt the presence of truth. Whether released by a container or through the lips of a servant's mask, Karis would observe the action of the gas from a spot as close to the area of effect as he possibly could in safety. When the rust settled, Karis would zealously scrutinize the remains for meaning. And now Karis looked back upon those investigations, and he spoke aloud, saying, O oh, Master Builder, I have felt your will. I know that I have been chosen to bring your paradise to the world. I know that I must not fail, or your wrath shall consume me, and I shall lie forever in the forest you have saved for those who are unholy. Master Builder, my mind shall be sharp, my machines will not falter, and I will keep Karis from the risk of death. In your name, I shall construct a protective chamber in Soulforge Cathedral, and there, where I cannot be harmed, Karis shall stay. I shall reconsider every element of my plan. If any are weak, Karis shall make them sound. Uh, I gotta swim back out. There's nothing else in here. That's really it. With that accomplished, let's... Look at our objectives. We have found and read another passage from the new scripture of the Master Builder. Booyah. So now just kind of wait till everybody's turned away, and I like to just hop down in here. Now we're done in this cavern, so I'm going to swim back through the same way we came in. I took another first alert. I don't just don't think there's a way to avoid it from those stationary guys. You you have to move fast, and moving fast gets at least a comment from them. So we'll save here. We'll get out the same way we got in. We're gonna go back to the cargo staging area and take this other exit from there. 
That's what I thought, so. Wait till the big robot's out of the way. I'll probably end up wanting to follow it if I can. Need to wait for that guy to turn around again. And we'll drop out and creep out. I wonder if I can just rush it, since I have the elevation advantage this time. Let's find out. If someone is there, then show thyself. Nope. <coughs> that was about the worst thing that could have happened. Okay. He's turned. Let's try to creep now. Yeah, I knew the drop was going to be trouble this time. Because it was going to force me to move faster than I had before. That drop is... It's just gonna be too fast. I don't think we can creep it on the way out. So I'm gonna wait here until the big robot comes back. Then we'll head out that tunnel. So for those keeping track, that's four first alerts in it. Well, multiple ones going into and into the flooded quarter, old living quarters. I think only one coming out of the old living quarters. One coming out of the main pirate cavern. And one from the pirate ghost. We also had to use an engine exploit on the pirate ghost, so that's five supreme busts. For Karis sake, is there some There's only one more that we have to take. So come into the light. Oh my gosh, is he doing a loop? That's what it looks like. Try again. There we go. So for now, just dive into the water. The observation room closed. The only person who could see us is the guy patrolling on the ship deck. You want to get over under these docks. I like to get right up to the corner. Surface for air here. Now to our south is the old pirate shanty. There is literally nothing in there we need, so I'm going to skip it. But if you are if you want to fully explore, feel free to head down there. South of the old pirate shanty is another place that has nothing we need. Subaquatic Post 2 is going to be the one blank spot on our map. I am going to swim to the north. Through this... Un underwater passage over to this corner and quietly surface here mantle up behind this guy pickpocket his key to main <laughs> cargo storage that's our fourth and final pickpocket go ahead and op open it up now for me he doesn't remark when I open it but see, one of these just has a mechanist mace in it. There's a rust gas container, which we'll need. That's the mechanist mace. Okay. So I got, yes, I have the rust gas container. So if we quietly move over here, there are a couple that we need to, we'll need to pick open. Coins bring our total to 1187. And a statue brings our total to 1262. Now, here's the other unavoidable supreme bust. When we close this door, he's going to first alert. Who's there? What noise dost make? Nothing to be done about that. <clears throat> now, to get out of here, we can't go back into the water or he'll go full on hunt mode. What we can do though, silently fire a rope arrow, 
Climb up. Man all up. Now, I like to drop his key into the water. I think that's plausible that it would end up, you know, in the water in this cavern. It's the best we can do anyway. My instructions are so what I'm going to do is jump off the uh, back of this shed and he won't hear us, which is nice. And then over very close to him, I'm going to drop his key. Now, all that's left is to get on board the Cetus Amicus itself. So let's swim back the way we came. We'll stop, pause for breath at the exact same spot. Then we'll get into the Cetus Amicus from a porthole on the bottom. So that first alert was a supreme bust, but it should end up being our last one. So we should watch the guy on the deck. That timing turned out to be pretty lucky for us. And right down here, there's a porthole which we'll use to get onto the ship. Or submarine, I guess. It is a submarine. There, we have boarded the Cetus Amicus. So there's no, there's no loot on the bottom level. If you're interested in gear, you can get the keys to the other cargo lockers in the pirate shanty I skipped. And there's some potions, bombs, mines, all kinds of goodies in there, but useless for a Supreme Ghoster. Let's read this. Cetus Amicus Cargo Manifest. Main hold, supplies for KD site. Cargo Locker 1, weaponry. Cargo Locker 2, potions. Cargo Locker 3, rust gas if moved from main cargo storage. Cargo Locker 4, scouting orbs. Cargo Locker 5, miscellaneous equipment. Just keep going through the bottom level. The only thing to worry about is those metal seams. If you clomp on one of those, they will hear you. There's only one guy patrolling. He's on the level above us. The two other guys stay in that chamber and are stationary, but we'll listen to them talk. Thou art new to the movie. Truth. Time passed. I served the hammer. But my heart could no longer bear to see such hard times befall them and such little spirit to carry on left. And it is clear to see that it profits little to be a hammer in these times. Aye, there is many had to come in such a while. It is not a hard task to see that we are the future. Thou wert not with the order of the hammer before? Nay, those brothers were always too stern and righteous for my choice. And they turned their faces away from our Lord Karis when he spoke of progress. When I heard of the great works he had made since he left them, I came. As a hammer, I was all forced to withstand the silent scorn of the masses. But the garb of a mechanist carries much prestige with it. There's that. So this room is safe, even though it's lit, as long as you don't make any noise. Open this door. Okay, he's in there right now, that's good. So we just want to time the one patroller and follow him out into the first floor. So, grab the vase in this first room. Brings our total to 1362. Then... This is where I like to take my first pause. In this little closet, behind the crate. You can't actually see it, but there's a statue. Worth 15. Brings the total to 1377. I still want to follow him, so I'm going to wait until he shows up heading south. And then I'll close this closet behind me and keep going. Let's 
he does that. Close this. Creep in after him. Okay, he's... If you wait right in this corner, that gives him room to pass by. With no comments. Now get in behind him. Someone is there. Although you have to let him get far enough away not to hear the door open. Go right first. There's a person here. Worth a hundred. Total fourteen seventy-seven. Then I like to hit the dining room. Two bottles of wine and two gold goblets bring our total to sixteen twenty-seven. That's all of the loot. So if you're keeping track, that's all the pickpockets, all the secrets, and all the loot. Now here I wait till I see the guard again, and then I follow him out. A noise. No need for that. Just give him a little time to get away. Now this room on the right... Read. Captain's Log, Cetus Amicus, Entry 1. Today was indeed a fine day, for Karis was on hand for the commissioning of this, the finest of vessels, the Cetus Amicus. In all my years as captain of seagoing craft, I never sailed a ship so sleek or strong. Verily, the Cetus Amicus mocks those wave-bound barges. To glide below the flotsam and jetsam, to stand safely in the womb of this steel shark as she cuts through the briny deep. Never again shall there be a vessel as fine as this. Entry 26. Damn that Fretus, he has failed miserably in his duties as cargo master, and will be disciplined forthwith. To lose the only key to Cargo Locker 5, he claims he passed it to Senwith while in Subaquatic Outpost 1, but the key has since disappeared. I fear it may have slipped beneath the flooring into the bilge water. Until one of the men can locate the key, Cargo Locker 5 remains sealed. Entry 30. Fish again. If only mutton would keep on our voyages. Entry 31. Today we set course once again for the KD site, bringing Cavador back to continue his excavation. He wouldn't go into details, but apparently he's uncovered some new artifact that Karis is very excited about. This may be the last voyage we make in quite some time, as Cavador has been ordered to remain at the site indefinitely. Entry 39. The crew is prepared for yet another voyage to the KD site, this time to drop off special cargo for Cavador. He's ready to excavate another zone, and as per standard mechanist procedure, needs to cleanse the area with rust gas to prevent the growth of any flora. I must admit, however, that I have grown tired of these mundane cargo runs. I feel the time has come to refit the Cetus Amicus as a ship of war, and venture beyond the confines of established routes. I shall propose this change to my superiors upon my return from the KD site. Now, when I get out of here, I'm going to kind of zip back to the north end of the ship and get into a shadow, but... We just get... We can just use this pillar as hard cover. So let's look at our objectives. Kidnap Cavador is now irrelevant because he's not here, but we have found and read the captain's log to find more information about the mechanist's operation. We already have stolen a sample of the rust gas to bring back to Victoria. We already have the missing key to Cargo Locker 5. So now that we've done everything else, we're going to stow away in the seat of Samicus in Cargo Locker 5. It's time to hitch a ride and see what Cavador's up to. It's nice. The key is an objective. This is good. It spares us having to return it for Supreme. So once the guard passes by, still be careful of the metal seams. Once you get to this room, you're completely safe. Again, except for the metal, so down the ladder, back out to the cargo lockers, into cargo locker 5, and the mission will end. Just need to make sure to keep quiet and lock it behind me. Tight fit. That was a short ride. There we have it. Perfect thief in precious cargo. There are all our objectives. Let's look at our stats. 
Total time, 49 minutes, 17 seconds. Found 1627 loot out of 1627. P pockets picked, four out of five. That's the bug that's always present. We got all the pickpockets. Locks picked two. No backstabs, no knockouts, no damage dealt or taken, no healing taken, nothing and no one killed. No iron beast disabled or destroyed. Found one out of one secrets. Campaign so far, 13 hours, 17 minutes, 16 seconds. 20,441 loot, that's all of it. Eight damage dealt, the eight knockouts and running interference, and received zero. To uh, inventory our supreme busts, we took one from the pirate captain. We Well, we took two from the pirate captain. We had to use an engine exploit just to ghost past him. And we took an unavoidable first alert on the way out. At least, I think it's unavoidable. We took two more, accessing the new scripture of the Master Builder. Although, technically, it was more than one from patroller from the any of the four AIs on the way in. We took first alerts on the way in and on the way out of the old living quarters. We took a first alert on the way out of the main pirate base cavern because the drop was just too fast and it triggered a comment from the stationary guard at the pressure door controls. And we took one more first alert when we shut the door to main cargo storage. So that's six busts total, which really isn't that bad, at least not compared to Life of the Party. So, there's my end game save. You might notice what I've been up to since Life of the Party. I've been messing around with Kidnap. It's very difficult, but I'm happy to report that it is ghostable. That's up next, although it'll probably take a while to record. So I will see you guys then. Bye-bye.